We're coming from the Turning Stone Casino and Resort in Verona, New York, way upstate. It's the Josh Northeast Nine Ball Tour finale. Another $25,000 added graciously by the Turning Stone Casino. And before we get started and introduce our players, we would like to thank Mike Burton. If you're in the market for a Josh Q, he has a display up here uh, that you really got to witness. But you can if you're not here. Just go over to mbqs.com. That's www.mbqs.com. Or simply call that telephone number right there in the poster. We want to thank uh, Baltimore City Qs. You see Karen on the poster there. That is Karen's sponsor, Baltimore City Qs. And their motto is they bring anything from tips to tables to your event. That's Baltimore City Qs. We also would like to uh, thank Alex Austin, Fine Billiard Products. It's uh, alexaustinusa.com or that telephone number you see on the poster. Uh, complete billiard room experience. Uh, you got to really go over to the website, www.dlbilliards.com. Uh, these are our sponsors that are on board uh, supporting the live stream. Uh, without them, it wouldn't be possible. So uh, go over there and check out Alex. We want to thank uh, Greg Antonakis. Get your Southwest from the best. That's what Greg says. And uh, if you follow Greg on social media, every time he sees a FedEx truck turn the corner, whether it's in his neighborhood or not, he might be somewhere else. He just gets excited. He's, oh, more Coca-Cola, more Southwest coming through. Get in touch with Greg at GA9Ball at gmail.com if you're in the market for a Southwest. Also, Chalky. That's right. Chalkysticks.com. This is a free app to put on your device. It'll tell you about the pool room, what kind of equipment. It's got a pool table design, so you can, if you happen to miss a shot or you want to learn a shot, uh, Darren Appleton actually uses it and uh, many other pros. Uh, it's a diagram of a pool table, and you can set up shots that you had problems with and discuss between each other why I missed or how I wound up in a position I was or what's the best way to play it. Also, there's a 24-hour billiard channel there. Um, you name it, they got it. Chalkysticks.com. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Molinari.com, big sponsors on board with the World Pool Series, uh, working their tails off down at Steinway. They're usually here at the turning zone, but they got so much work under their belts. It's MolinariGlove.com. The best gloves you can get on the market are right there, plus other Predator products. MolinariGlove.com. Also, Light-Systems.com. Mark Dion, baby. This is MD Promotions. It's the New England Nine Ball Series Winter Classic. It's January 28th through the 29th. 2017. It's going to be held at Snookers. That's right, it's Snookers in Providence, Rhode Island on Ashburton Street. We call it the home away from home. We're going to be there to bring you the free live stream. Make sure to get in touch with Mark Dion right away. Get your entry fee in. I understand it's filling up. It's coming up right after the World Pool Series with uh, after Darren Appleton. We're heading to Providence, Rhode Island January 28th through the 29th. Get in touch with Mark Dion. Thank Molinari, Delta 13, and the rest of the crew. We'll be there. The Kings of Vapor and also the Kings of Billiards in Akron, Ohio, and uh, Kings of Vapor are now spreading all over the place as you heard uh, Chow bowling in the booth in the prior match. And we also want to uh, remind you that by billiards you go to azbilliards.com there's a tab on the top that says buzz you click that and you could read stories and results from tournaments around the world written by the jerry foresight other writers interesting crystal clear billiards buzz check them out azbilliards.com
Sorry about that glitch, folks. I hit the button. Uh, make sure to check out Billiards Buzz uh, on AZ Billiards. Uh, all you do is go to azbilliards.com, and there's a tab at the top of the front page that says Buzz. That's an online magazine. No subscriptions necessary. It's absolutely free. Read everything that's going around the world as far as pool and billiards and stories from past all the way to the future. Written by numerous people, uh, and leading up the pack is Mr. Jerry Forsyth himself of AZ Billiards. And we're going to be heading down to Steinway, Steinway Billiards in Astoria, Queens, New York, for the World Pool Series 8-Ball. Uh, players from 30 different countries so far. What an enormous and what a magnificent field. You could find out all the information about the pay-per-view. You can buy a seasonal pass for the whole year, and you never have to pay for a pay-per-view through the season. Yeah, I think it's like $100, $110. Get over to worldpoolseries.com and just look around the website. It's professionally designed by Ira Lee's sister, who's a magnificent web designer. It's worldpoolseries.com. Also, we want to remind you that uh, AccuStats will be heading down to Derby City Classic, and then once again, they'll be bringing the pay-per-view event, the Bigfoot 10-ball challenge, 9-ball, bank pool, and one pockets, all on AccuStats.com. Mr. Pat Fleming, Jim Fredericks, and the whole crew uh, will be bringing you a full production as usual. Sounds like Mike Zuglin is going to start working his way down, so we're going to leave it right here. It's Nicole Fleming versus Kapow, Caroline Powell. Right here on the main table. Got the ladies up here. It's going to be a race to nine.
everyone, right here on uh, Free Live Stream, courtesy of Upstate Al. He's in the box there with, uh, with Troy O'Brien, hey Troy. And let's not forget easybillions.com is where you can access the live stream. From Palisades Park, New Jersey, she's sponsored by Mez Jews, Amsterdam Billiards and Castle Billiards, Caroline Powell, and her opponent, She's from Laurel, Maryland. It's only her second time here. She has a lot of high finishes on the Action Pool Tour in the Touch Hour Women's Northeast Women's Tour. Welcome, Nicole Fleming. Good luck. That should be an entertaining match. Good luck. There you have it, the introductions. Kapow, Caroline Powell versus Nicole Fleming. Provincial 9-ball, 10-ball, and 8-ball champ, Rob Zakel, his opponent. He is uh, the founder of East Coast Pool Tournaments on Facebook. He's also I believe uh, Nicole Fleming is sponsored by he does, he does our site for us, as well as the Brews and Cues in Maryland, or Cues and Brews so uh, in Maryland. Does a great job, uh, from and of course, uh, Caroline Powell, uh, sponsored by Mez Cues. We want to thank everybody out there uh, viewing the live stream. We also want to thank Dan Heydrich of Heydrich Custom Cues, Hippos, Billiards, AZ Billiards on uh, sponsorship with Mike Zuglin, uh, Simona's Cloth, of course, and Aramith Bowls, uh, Josh Cues, uh, PoolOnTheNet.com, and Billiards Press, Mr. Phil Capel. He has his books here. They're available, and he actually, I believe, is 20% off uh, very rare you're going to find Phil Capel's books uh, with a discount like that. So if you're in the market for some real good education about pool inside and outside of uh, just about every discipline, they are available if you're coming down to the Turning Stone this weekend. Stop by the front desk and talk to Mike Zuglin. As, uh, he has authorization from Phil Capel. My first time uh, actually live streaming Nicole Fleming. Boy, I tell you what, she hit him pretty solid and made the wing ball. The one ball is up table and it looks like the six is just going to aggravate the situation.
Okay, Mike Zuglin finished with the announcements as Caroline Powell, a.k.a. Kapow, uh, just pockets the one ball in the bottom right-hand corner, and she has a shot at the two. All right, is Lance here? Lance just bought tickets. Lance just bought uh, raffle tickets for Saturday's drawing. If you're here, could you come up, please? Well, she does have a possible combination right here, three nine into the corner pocket if she elects to do so. She also has a nice safe where she can roll up on a nine. It's always good to get that first game, you know, Troy. Hey, you, how, how's yeah. everybody? Hi, Al. Hey. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, she can get aggressive here, play the nine, or she has an option to play the uh, three ball to the left side, uh, left corner. And come, come in and go three rails and she's going for the nine. Yeah, she's going for the yeah. And made it. Watch the rock. Good shot. Caroline Powell takes the lead real quick by a score of one nothing. We are racing tonight. Quite a few uh, female competitors oh, yeah. in this open event, which is uh, nice to see. Yeah, you got Jennifer Beretta. You got, uh, of okay. course, Caroline. Nicole. Yeah, Caroline, Nicole, um, Karen Core. Same way. Caroline's just having a little problem moving over one of the beads. Uh, it's kind of stuck on the wire, and she doesn't really want to rub a shaft on the cable. So she's going to ask one of the floor guys at the... Uh, Karen Core, yes. Samantha Bretta. Yeah, Samantha uh, Barrett, yeah. Barrett. Mm -hmm. At least a half a dozen. In fact, Jennifer Brett is playing three tables down. See, but we got it. No, there's actually a beat stuck. What they should do is just put them all towards the center and then count backwards on each one. Can I reach that? Let me go over there and uh, issue solved. So 
What are they gonna do? Nope, all that is uh So what did they do to resolve the problem there when we look up the beats? They just moved the center beat over so it's not touching the one white bead that was stuck. Three ball combination? No, I guess so. How about a nine ball? Are you kidding? I turned my back. I'm doing a little work over here. Is um, it tie score now? Yep. Yeah. yeah, she just uh, right. made the two and kicked the nine in. A lot of work. Solid break, but it comes up dry. I don't believe uh, Caroline's going to be able to hold this up, but we'll see. Maybe yeah, she might be able to.
Is it Danny Hewitt or Amar Kang? Could you please come to the front, Hewitt or Kang? Please come to the front. Tell you what, that's a that was pretty nice nifty shot. shot yeah, it's a nice shot. Often uh, people undercut that. Now she just goes naturally. Two rails back around for the seven ball. Just watch your speed. You don't want to overcook this. Uh oh, undercooked. Missed. Does that give you like a telltale sign that she wasn't sure of the speed? Yeah, probably. Confident to the, of the table. Yeah, it might take a little while. Didn't set it in motion like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Think it through. Sorry about that. It's a little harder than it needed to be like that cue ball. Yeah, but not impossible. Looks no, like she just no. got a nice slight angle. She, I wouldn't jack up she's on jacking her. Jacking up, yeah. yeah I, think I don't think she has to with that angle. You just shoot it in, right? Yeah, I think she can roll it in and still wind up about 10 or 12 inches. Of, you know what I mean? No foot or so away from the nine. Let's take a look at the angle. Let's go the other way, guys. <laughs> yeah, she's got a slight angle. Yeah. Jack up. Bring that cue back to that cue ball. Uh, cue stick down. Yeah. Of course. Too hard. Right. No, she can make this stuff. Oh yeah. I think so. Let's look at it from the front. Yeah. Should be able to cut this in. She can reach it. Oh, she stretched out. She could spin this, you know, and get to the rails. Yeah. She doesn't really have to hit it that hard. Just, just put a nice spin on it just to get to the rail so she doesn't scratch. Your watch your corner if you go rail first. Nice speed. She got out of that. And it's now two to one, Caroline Powell. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Bass Lenny in the chat. Uh, always doing the right thing. On the rail TV. What do you got coming up, Lan? Let us know. Mike Strasberg in the chat. Caroline is a, the one of the mess dealers, right? Or yes, she is mess. She is mess, yeah. Right. So there's the face of mess. If you guys need anything from them, there it is. Chinook wins 
I, I knew you had some casino tournament going on, a real big one all the time. There it is, in Oregon in March, in Wyoming opening in April, uh, Diamond Pool Tour, uh, something next month. Thanks for your hard work, bud. You got it. Thanks for yours, too. Little safety issue here. Doing safe. Oh, doing she pretty good, Mike. It. Just uh, acknowledging a few people in the chat. Uh, Celeste is there out on the West Coast. Uh, Western Women's in March in Vegas. Look at this. Boy, there's a lot of pool going on, huh? I like it. Let's all get under one roof. Yeah, I was have just all these the same thing. major tournaments under one roof. Wow. Yeah. How would that be? Get all on the same schedule. Right? And have like a, a tour. 2,000 people, 3,000 people right in one location. That would be sweet. 24 hours around the clock. Eight hours on and eight hours off. It would give eight us. Eight hours on and eight hours off. It would give us some uh, huh? leverage too. As a community, sure would. Boy, Nicole hit that pretty good right there. <laughs> she got right on that ball. Kind of tapped the chalk to put the air brakes on the cue ball. What's she gonna do here now? She's just gonna just leave it. Just punch there? it off. Or is she gonna try and get to the other side? I don't believe the five goes past eight, does it? If it does, then all she doesn't do is just bounce it off the rail anyway, right? Yeah, it goes. Yeah. Okay. Well. As long as it goes, she doesn't have to do much. She can just well, just a little bit, you know, a little draw, bounce off the rail. You don't want to go too out, far out of the way. Oh, well, she had enough to punch it. It's fine. Ideally, you like to leave yourself a little angle shooting a six ball uh, to get over to the seven. Yeah. I mean, she can just kind of roll up and be in line with the nine almost, but far enough away from where you can bridge. She's she got a little concerned. This is uh, <laughs> this is where you see mistakes until you commit. You have to commit to your shot here. Well, as long as she's not too straight and she can follow this up, some left-hand English when she's drawing. All right, commit to drawing it. That's it. Good shot. Yeah, still has the angle to get across. That six ball. Now uh, Caroline Powell actually faced with not much. I, don't know, I wouldn't want to be cutting this in. I think uh, Caroline's going to like to play a real nice safety here. The thing is, make sure you hide the cue ball. If you're going to bring that, if you're going to bring that cue ball way down table, you got to make sure you duck it. So if you don't, you might open up a shot on the six. Just like that. Wait, wait for it. No, well, she left her. Left her shot. Left her a good shot. Not much to do, just make it. It's, it's, this is touchy though. You gotta know, watch the speed. Oh boy. Watch the pocket. Right in the pocket, the cue ball went. Ball in hand for Caroline Powell with the 789 on the table. Blizzard on its way is a doozy, Marty Herman says oh up there. Boy. I have a, not a question, but a, a, almost a comment that I would like the question to be asked. Uh, answered, but not by you. Okay. <laughs> How many father-sons teams were there in this tournament? I had 128 players. There was a quite a few. 
father and son, I, I would guesstimate four, five maybe. Is that right? Yeah, I think oh, so. You got a little inside scoop that I don't know. Just by hearing uh, Mr. Luglin when he was announcing them. Well, you got uh, Johnny Mora and Mario, that's one. You got um, Oscar and Ernesto, that's two. I don't know of any others because Greg Antonakis isn't here, but if Greg was here, it would be Nick and okay, Greg right, Antonakis. Right. That would have been three. Right. That would have been three. And then as, far as, as far as uh, uh, mothers and daughters, none. Or aunts and none. No, no, niece, no. none. I think uh, there was four or five. I'm trying to think where the other one was. Maybe one of the groups from Canada. I gotta update the score. Caroline Powell now leads 3 1. Oh, a real nice break there. Very controlled. How'd you like this for uh, everyday work? Oh, she can do it too. Yeah, she's she's a tough competitor. She plays uh, in our area. It doesn't. I mean, I know she has the table in the house, but doesn't she normally shoot out of uh, Castle Billiards, John Tribbiano's room? I believe so. Yeah. And uh, at one time, I don't know if Scotty uh, Seminetti is still working with Caroline. But uh, Scott Seminetti was her coach for a while. Caroline's coach. Uh-oh. We got trouble. Maybe not. Kind of made the ball, ball a little bit easier. Perfect. Looking to buy a Molinari glove, and there you see it right there. High Rock Store, you can go right there, or MolinariGlove.com. But High Rock Store, you can see a lot of products there uh, that Eric Kwong and uh, I really have of Molinari. Yeah, if they are, they're out of stock, they'll be getting Thanks, real Mike. soon. I like this because the six ball does go in the corner, but if you can play the six on the side, you're better off. Just watch the eight ball when you come back out. Not too much. She went too far. Yeah. That's a problem with playing the side there, huh? Well, I heard girls kick real good. Right? I don't know. I never heard that. I mean, it's oh, I don't believe it was a no, I heard gender that. thing. Yeah, oh, sure. It's a gender thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is there a logic behind your reasoning? Or Look at the Rockettes. You don't see men up there oh. kicking like that. <laughs> I mean. uh, how many punters do you know that are females? I don't know any. You're talking about in the NFL? Yeah, well, you brought up the Rockettes. Did Caroline actually feather that six ball? I must have missed it. Almost looks like it's sitting in the same place. Where can I buy a stroke like John Moore? What can I buy a stroke like John Moore has? Mm. Got to go to the ER room in Canada. They sell strokes. Fully fixed strokes, right? What a shot. Beautiful. Yeah, that stroke comes from years of playing and practice. And oh, and having a mother and father yeah, champion, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just being bred right into the family. <laughs> from the age of uh, two, three years old, uh, having pool tables and mom and dad shooting out, you'll learn.
Oh, Cassie, Joe, you missed it. You should have been here. We can't give you any results. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Johnny Mora did uh, defeat Taz. Uh, Darren's not out of the tournament. Uh, just moved over to the B side of the chart. And not, not against Taz, but uh, just Johnny Moore just played pretty much lights out. He, yeah. he he didn't make. I think he may have gotten out of line a little bit, won the shot. And, yeah. Uh, then uh, then it was that uh, that unforced error by Darren, uh, yeah. letting that cue ball go hot and getting out of position. He's he's not 100 percent Darren Apple no, right no, now. But he's got a lot on his plate. Trust me. And just. You know, not to take any away thing from John, he, he just John just shot the lights out, kind of. Uh, oh yeah, Johnny shot shot good without a doubt. But it always takes somebody else not to shoot that good, unless you control the table and you run packages, you know. Uh, well, it's a good about it's Darren a good one. To, it's uh, a good one to go back on uh, Roku and uh, definitely watch. Uh, and, you know, the viewers are saying speaking about his stroke. Just to sit there and watch him play yeah. that match. Oh yeah. In a. Uh, his, it's a pleasure to watch. In his demeanor and just a way about going, going just about his business. Fluid, just, fluid just player. The speed. Here's Daz right now. Speed control that he had. Yeah, Daz. Talking about the dazzle. Stopping by. The What's booth. up, mate? You weren't there today. I know your head's not there. Yeah, I know. I know it's not there. I told everybody. You did. The cue ball got hot one time. He got out of line. It was uh, never. Because it, it hit the six. Look. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have Daz in the booth uh, for a few minutes, I would imagine. After he has a, he's eating a tube steak. Is that tube steak? Yeah, tube steak. <laughs> tube steak. I'm not a dog. And. Uh, we, I should have a little work here. I think you just kind of accept. Yeah, this is a B-side uh, match here. Yeah, B-side match. You, you just make the eight here, accept the spot shot. You, you try and force this and go around with the cue ball. Uh, nine out of ten times, that, that eight ball just rims right out of it. There you go. Nice shot. Smart play. You hear Darren in the background. Let me see if we can get some headphones on him. An asset to this uh, game of pool that we have, we definitely need, uh, as Mr. Herman states, more women, children, and uh, people of my age and older. They're seniors, although I'm quite not there yet.
something distracted Caroline to the and the bleachers on the other side. She made some wind ball again. Oh, here comes the tree. Can they ruin the party? Nope, she's got it. Discussing, uh, you know, you can't always have Taron Appleton, Jason Shaw, and Johnny Moore, and the likes of, you know, world beaters on a table. And these open, whether they're open players or, or amateur players, this isn't an open tournament, and they put their hat in the ring. Let me tell you, it's not, a, it's not an easy thing. Actually, one of the gentlemen came up to me before. He says, uh, I had a match, and I was just out of sorts. He was nervous. He wasn't even on a stream table. He was just nervous. He said he played terrible. And I said, the competition will do it to you. And he's asking Al and I, uh, you know, what can he do to, you know, say, meditate and, you know, lessons and practice and put yourself under the fire. Um, that's how they forge steel, right? Triple bank. And a scratch. Oh boy. Come from here, huh? That's a tough safe, too. Anybody see something? We play the uh, three to the long rail. No, she went for it. And fouled the five. That is a foul. Balls were in motion. That is the rule here. If you're uh, over a ball and you happen to touch it before you shoot, you can ask your opponent to put it back where they believe it was. But if once that cue ball's in motion, you hit another ball, that is a foul. We've been discussing that. Uh, I was speaking with Tony over this, and we're discussing, you know, how many different rules there are. We should, you know what? We should just, the rules are all ball fouls. Amateurs, pros, everybody. You touch the ball, it's a foul. I kind of like it. I know it's a little harsh, but, well, you know, the rules are the rules. Why do we have to hold people's hands? Oh, you touched the ball. Just put it back. Right. No. Don't touch the ball. <laughs> you may, may, or may not agree. And I could, could be wrong. Caroline's in nice position here. I don't think she wants to try and, well, she can try and pinch this a little bit, a little draw, but that's a dangerous shot. You, you want to make this uh, seven with a little confidence, but you got to watch that side pocket too if you're going to be bouncing off. I don't know. You want to make the seven though, that's for sure. Get cute and try and hold stuff up. There you go. Well, folks, uh, got a little special treat here. Uh, yeah. We got uh, Dynamite Darren Appleton, a seven-time Moscone member of the team. No, no, eight-time member of the team. Oh, well, excuse me, man. <laughs> what do you mean eight-time? Seven-time seven seven winner. Seven-time winner? Eight-time yeah. eight time member? Seven in a row. Oh, seven, okay. Eight in a row. I mean, eight in a row. I've won the oh, last oh, seven. oh, that's a nice attitude. I kind of like that. Yeah, uh, it's only because you're American. I just thought I'd wind you up. Cocky guy that you are. <laughs> 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 there he is, folks, right on your screen. That's uh, Darren Appleton, world champion, yeah. eight ball player, and you name it, he's got the titles under his belt. Well, guys, I know that you come over here and you want to commentate on Caroline Powell's match. Yep. Yeah, she's but a really good friend of mine. 
We also I've won. actually gave us uh, quite some coaching. I've, uh, she's been over to my house a few times, coached her. Uh, uh, when I first come to America, she was one of the first person I actually met in New York, and uh, she's always been. She's a really super nice person, anyway, to yeah, everyone. She but she's been. Uh, she's really helped me a lot, and uh, she's uh, one of the nicest people in the game. And she plays good, but she don't believe how good she plays. Yeah. She needs that bit more fire, a bit more confidence. But she, she's always playing herself down. She's, she's too nice, but she does play good. She does. She does. But she, yeah. could, but she could be a lot better if she really wanted to be. She's got that, that not potential, she has that, yeah, yeah. that <coughs> focus about her. Well, know? also, she's got a full-time job. She's obviously doing all the men's stuff. and yeah. uh, So it's not a priority, but she just loves playing the game. I just got to update the score. It's four to one, uh, Caroline Powell. Yeah, she's a tough shot here on the eight balls. Just play plain ball. No, need, don't need any English on the cue ball. So I just got to focus on making it. By the way, I think your better half is actually in the chat, or she was in the she chat. She was. I don't think she's there. Anymore. Yeah, she should be watching a film now. She'll be giving the dogs treats, and she'll be watching a film. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, or like one of her TV shows. <laughs> Relaxation is always good. Yeah, Caroline actually hit the eight ball pretty good, but she overcut it, which is very difficult to overcut the eight ball. Uh, the worst thing you want to do is undercut the eight ball, because uh, then you're sort of guaranteed to leave it. But the way she played it, she played it the right way. Just hit it a little bit too thin. Uh, and Nicole, she, she's overrun the cue ball slightly. So this this table is very quick. The the, the tables uh, at Turning Stone Classic, uh, Turning Stone Classic, are a bit quicker than uh, what what we're used to. Oh, so that's all, a good all thing. brand new cloth, you know, the temperature, the climate control. What I've noticed cooler. as well is that they've gone back to the old tops, the uh, the uh, brown brown wood tops. Yeah. Where before I was playing with the black ones, and uh, I don't think they played as good as these ones. So I'm very happy that we got these tables back. I don't know why, but they, they just seem to play better. Uh, a bit I quicker. Think it, I think it reminds you of something that you have in your, uh, mm. your, your man then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But these tables are quicker than my tables. Uh, that my table at home, just because the con the conditions in here are perfect. Talking about tables, okay. tables for the World uh, Pool Series, yeah. the eight ball mm. World Pool Series at Steinway. What are the specifications? Because I've been telling people that you've been banging your head mm. to make sure that everything is perfect. Mm. Any if the rug is wrinkled, I want it ironed. Yeah. I mean, you were on top of things, yeah. and you got a lot of stuff on your head. Yeah. Are all the tables pocket sizes going to be the same? Yep. They are. They're all, all going to be 4.25. All right, so four and a quarter pockets. Four and a quarter. Uh, we recloth the tables two weeks before every tournament. We, we have, so that we don't want the table, uh, the cloth too new because then the tables still slide and they play a little bit too easy. So after two weeks, they play perfect. Uh, so obviously, I think the conditions are good. Obviously, we're using the tables in the pool, the, uh, pool room, the uh, Brunswick's. Right. Uh, we did try to get a couple of table deals, didn't quite work out, uh, but we're still working on one, but uh, maybe we're looking at the middle of the year, maybe from the, from like event free onwards, we, we might have a table deal. So we're sort of holding out for this table deal because uh, it's a big company and we really want to get them. Right. So we've actually turned down a couple of table deals just because we're holding out for this one. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. That's good to hear. Uh, but we're ho we're hoping that the grand final event number four is going to be in a casino. We're still uh, ongoing talks. Right. Uh, but that's our goal is to get the grand final in a casino. Uh, looking at Atlantic City, so we're really pushing for that. Now, folks, um, keep in mind. I'm sorry to cut you short. That if you go over to WorldPoolSeries.com website, that's just been put up and by Ira Lee's uh, sister. I mean, professionally done. Yeah. Um, what's what's Ira Lee's sister's first name? Anna. Anna, okay. Anna Lee. Uh, you can purchase a season pass and you'll be eligible to watch the finale if it's held at the casino. Yeah. So you go over there and purchase your season pass. You'll be able to see all the streams for the year. The WorldPoolSeries.com. Yeah. Uh, I'm just looking at this nine ball and then we'll continue. She's got a tough shot here. Uh, she don't need to put anything on the cue ball, just play it plain ball. You know, she, she got distracted, uh, which kind of happened. She, uh, the, the person behind her sort of bumped her when she got down to the shot the first time. So she had to get back up. So this makes this shot a lot tougher now. 
and just just put a bit of shoulder into that one. Didn't miss it bad, but it was an easy shot. Uh, so this has been a an, an exciting game. I think they've had uh, maybe three or four visits each on the eight ball and nine ball. So this is a big rack for Nicole. Uh, obviously four one down. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, to, to purchase tickets, uh, general tickets or VIP seats, and in the venue, you can go on willpoolseries.com. All the all the all the details are on there. Uh, you can purchase a stream. You can do it daily, or you can do like a, an event package, or you can get the full season pass package, which is obviously if you if you're intending to watch all four events, then that's what I suggest you do. And there's the link. It works out about 50% cheaper by doing that. In the chat room, Jimmy. Put the link in the chat yeah, room cheers, right there. Cheers. Just, uh, just click on it. That's all you got to do. Oh, too slow? Yeah, that's Jimmy down in Virginia. Oh, nice. Cheers, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah, it's going to be good. I mean, obviously, there's uh, a few teething problems. I mean, you've got to be very patient. That's the biggest thing that I've learned is that I've got to be very patient. I'm not a very patient person. I like things doing. So I've, I've had to be very patient. So uh, great shot. Well, and I'll tell you, that it's coming uh, from me uh, personally. Uh, I can probably relate to the pressure that you've been under for the last few months mm. uh, trying to put this together and just watching you operate. You, you, you're not a type yeah, of person yeah. just to collapse and say, you know what, I'm walking away from this. I had no, enough. You want to make it happen. And by making it happen, folks, let me tell you something. I think I see what Darren's uh, going for. He's, he's bringing pool to America at a different level. It's something that's going to be remembered for a long time and probably a stepping stone that's going to be really built into something for American pool. That, that's what I see down the future. Well, I think the big thing is that uh, I just got frustrated with other tournaments. Uh, Organisers not doing their job right and uh, not really in it for the game, just in it for themselves. And that really frustrated me. It's been frustrating me for a couple of years. I started taking more detail. When I go to tournaments, I'm starting looking at it. Like even I come here, I'm, I'm looking what they're doing good, what, what, what they could do better, because there's always room for improvement, and just try and learn stuff. Uh, yeah. So I, I do take a lot more notice at tournaments now, the way it's run, uh, the way they advertise their sponsors and everything else. So that's very important. Uh, but it's just a case of just trying to build something, try not to uh, think, think, think too far in front of myself. Uh, but the good thing is that I've got a good team. Uh, even though I'm looking to improve the team in, in, in the future, get the right marketing people and stuff like that. Right. But we, you need money to do that. And we've, our, we've already spent a lot of money. Uh, our own money. Me and me and Manny's invested money what we didn't expect to spend. But we just... I think because we both want to make sure it's right or get it as good as we can, uh, we've decided to m maybe take a hit ourselves and uh, uh, so uh, um, make it happen. Man is a workaholic. He's just oh, uh, yeah, he's, but, but he's a very stressed out guy. But I like it because he's funny with it. That's uh, the difference. Yeah. So I, I like <laughs> to wind him up when he's stressed out. I, I just give him a, a, a couple of more things to do, just <laughs> just to wind him up. So we, we have a good relationship, and uh, even when he gets angry, it, it doesn't bother me. I, I just uh, wind him up. Yes. A little bit more. <laughs> yeah. So, and, and we've had a lot of help from Hira Lee and Eric. Clark. Oh, I mean, without them two, uh, we'd be nowhere near where we're we talking about Molinari folks. They're yeah. unbelievable. Hira yeah, Lee but they're Eric. the type of guys what don't want to take any credit. Uh, but I have to give them a lot of credit because their vision has been incredible, and I've learnt a lot from them. Uh, the sponsor, uh, the sponsors in the industry have really opened my eyes up. Bit, took a lot of good advice from Predator Molinari. Uh, check your guys, people like that give me a lot of advice and uh, we le learn, learning all the time and I know it's going to be tough. Well, uh, don't uh, undercut yourself too because no, like I you mean, said, uh, you've been around to many yeah. tournaments around the world and you have the eye for what's good and what's not good. Sort of like yeah. a painter. You know, if you bring a painter into your house and he says, wow, who painted this with a roller? I can still see the wall. There's a little bit of paint, you know, what do we call holidays? It's not really painted, you know. It's like very thin. Yeah. So you got to have the eye. Oh, no, I've got it's a, a professional uh, eye. There's no doubt. I've got a good eye, and yeah. I, I, un, I understand what should be, what doesn't work, and what should work. And uh, right. it's very frustrating because it happens nearly every time. And uh, I, I can pick, I can pick faults every time, and, and I, I'll, I'll be picking faults next week. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I want criticism because uh, that's the only way you improve. And but I listen to people where. A lot of organizers, they don't listen, and this is a problem. 
they don't want to know. They just want to do it their way. And, their that's way that. and way. these are the events what don't last. Uh, they have a short lifespan and uh, they lose respect from the players. And uh, I've said it before, like the players are not easy to deal with, but the promoters haven't helped the players a, a hell of a lot. So this is why the, the players are, are really kind of a bad attitude, you know what I mean? And uh, I, un I, un I, un I understand why they do, because I I'm a player also. So I understand their frustrations and uh, uh, there's some events where we get treated great. Like this, I mean, this turning stone has been going a long time, so he, he has a, a, a nice settled tournament. <coughs> and uh, uh, every, 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 everything runs like clockwork here and everyone gets paid. And you're playing in uh, a, a beautiful arena, so you can't ask for much more than that. Uh, I gotta agree. This I think this is a, the best venue I ever yeah, seen. Yeah, on the East Coast, this is uh, it's one of the best tournaments on the East Coast yeah. for sure. I mean, the the the, the venue is amazing, yeah. and uh, I'm I'm pretty sure if he really wanted to, he could do a lot more of it. But that's uh, but he's he's happy with what he's doing here. I mean, yes. he's, he's uh, he 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 does a good job, uh, and he always gets a full field. So and uh, uh, but I I think this 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 tournament and this venue has got a hell of a lot of potential. Uh, but obviously, uh, uh, Mike Zulgel, and he, he actually runs the Josh, uh, the Josh Tour. Yeah. So obviously, he's a very busy guy. He's running what, uh, maybe 15, 20 tournaments a year. So he, he probably don't have the time to put more more energy in, into this particular tournament. But, uh, but, uh, but at the same time, he's got it to a good level, and he's, he 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 does a really good job. But what I like about Mike is that he takes no nonsense. He tells you straight, and uh, that's I think that's so. Uh, I sort of, I sort of like that. Uh, so I, I, I sort of respect him because he's he, he'll tell you straight. It took him a long time to build uh, not just yeah. this tournament, yeah, the, tour a, yeah, the tour itself. A lot itself, of leg yeah. work, a lot yeah. of people. You know how it is, mm. and it took him a long time to do it. You yeah. know, and uh, hey, he's the captain of the ship. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's open for suggestions. Yeah, yeah. He, well, if you were here for the players meeting, you know, he he's just tired of people changing the rules yeah, put yeah. the nine ball on the spot there's too many Three different balls rules past the line he says if everybody gets together and well, makes one standard rule yeah, yeah, yeah. and sticks by it he will change also well i think the problem you've got is that all all the amateur tours and some of the bar table tournaments let's say they all change the rules all the time so this is a problem in america but all over the world now we're playing nine ball on the spot uh, <coughs> so like that that is the official rule the nine ball on the spot and uh break anywhere behind the line uh, with a three point rule so i mean obviously yeah but that three point <coughs> rule changed it was like you know it was the head string up above the head string then it was the side pocket they changed and then they went back to the head string yeah i mean if if you're using a template you have to use a three point rule uh, but if you if you're using a regular rack then you shouldn't have the three point rule that's basically the rule now now, do you like the three-point rule just passing the side pockets? Or no, past the, uh, the head, head string. string. Because if you're using a plastic rack, then uh, uh, you've got to hit the balls pretty decent uh, to get the three-point rule. Uh, but also, it stops a soft break. Because with a template, you can really soft break and you're making that wing ball all the time. Right. Even with the nine ball on the spot. But if you're using a regular rack, then you don't need anything. Because then, obviously, there's there's no dead balls, you know what I mean? Because it's very hard to get all the balls touching. It, yeah. It's like this tournament here. I mean, your opponent's racking, and, yeah. and it's virtually impossible to get every ball touching, so you just accept the break, and you just break. I, I never check any rack in this tournament. I, I never check the rack. I, I just break. I just can't. I can't. I can't be bothered to get into arguments with my opponent right. about uh, the break. So if so if I don't see it, I don't, I don't uh, have any bad mindset. I think the honor system is a good system. But of course, we all know when uh, you break the balls at mm. 30 miles an hour and they don't move, <laughs> <laughs> it's a total different story. But no, I, yeah, know, I mean that's the honor system is really uh, the way to go. I think it's okay to check the rack, uh, but unless there's like obvious big gaps, I don't think you should be able to re-rack them. Well, Ask you, your opponent. You know, to re Mario Mora, uh, Johnny's father, brought up a good point. Mm. You know, because I, I mentioned this to him, we we had him in the booth here, and uh, I asked him about this do dadding with the rack and stuff. Mm. He says, you know what I think? Whether it be a uh, magic rack or whether it be any other template that they're playing with, mm. you get up there, you put the balls on the template and mm. don't touch them. Just set them in, don't touch them. Yeah. Pony gets up there and breaks. Yeah. No checking the racks. Okay, yeah. I mean, the template's <coughs> supposed to hold them tight. 
Yeah, I mean, makes sense. the only other option is to just rack the balls yourself, and uh, you're not like you're, you're you're not allowed to check the rack, obviously, because it's not your break. I mean, uh, but in an ideal world, we we would like 20 referees, and the referee rack the balls. <coughs> but we but obviously that costs a lot of money, so uh, that's going to take a long time before that happens. Uh, but it, obviously, in the world championships and that, we have referees, and it's a lot better. But obviously. Uh, I don't know really. I think uh, I think just use a regular rack and put the nine ball on the spot, and then there's no arguments really because right. it's a tough break. Now uh, I got a phone call yesterday that says uh, European teams going down this year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're coming for you. Yeah. They're coming for yeah. you with rock and roll songs. They're coming for you. Well, that's good. That's what they need to do. I mean, because uh, the European guys, they they, I mean, the European fans, they have a great time. They 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 know how to party at at the Moscone, but. And they they enjoy themselves. They, uh, it's fun. But the Europeans is a lot younger crowd than the Americans. So a lot of younger the a lot of the younger generation in America need to get to Vegas and get behind their team. You know what Where, I think? You know, and here in America, when somebody was playing oh. pool, you it was like shh, quiet. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Be quiet. And, and and over in Europe, mm. it doesn't matter if you're rowdy, yeah. or you're in the background, or you're in a pub. Well, especially in a, especially in a team a team environment, it is. It, but even if you're playing a big money game in Europe, everyone goes crazy. Right. Uh, but I mean, in America, in general, the crowds, it's a lot older crowd in America. I mean, like if, if, if you go to the US Open, I'd probably say that the average age is about 50, 50, right. 55. Right. In, in out of like six, 700 people uh, in Europe, if you go to the Moscone in Europe, the average age is probably like 30, you know what I mean? Yeah. 35, so there's a big difference. Old enough to have a alcoholic beverage. Yeah, they're, 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 they'll over drink and yeah. <laughs> they know all the songs, they know all the uh, soccer chants and all that stuff, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and uh, they're like a beer where the, yeah, I mean, uh, but I think if you go to an uh, American football game in, uh, like in the States, and it's it's a great atmosphere cause, right. cause be, because it's a younger crowd. So okay. I, I think it's more of a case that the Americans need to try and get more more young people going to watch the Moscone. Okay, so you're talking about a, a get team, a bit more a rowdy, team, yeah, rap, Moscone get, get, Cup type get, thing. Yeah. Get, get, get more rowdy and try and make it more intimidating for us because when we play in Vegas, we... I'll tell you what. It's sort of half and half. If even, I was the motivational speaker for the USA, you can rest assured yeah. that I'm bringing the cheerleaders. Yeah. I'm bringing a bus yeah, full of cheerleaders. Bring whatever you want. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it's great. It's going to affect you, don't worry. And, and by the well, way, there's a question so in the chat. Cup. When you become a, a U.S. citizen, are you going to play for America? Well, it's impossible, isn't it? What, what do you mean it's impossible? Well, I'll, I'll, <laughs> we'll I'll hold you hostage, I've man. Already, I've already played for Europe, so it, it, it's... it's uh, I've already played for Europe, so it's, it, for one, it's, it's impossible. <laughs> Second, I'd never do that just because I'm British. Yeah, I mean, my yeah. family go crazy. <laughs> and obviously, I, I love America. I, l I love living here. But it, well, my, you're a likable guy. But at end, at end of the day, I'm British. My my art wouldn't be in it. Let's say. I mean, well, uh, I can't imagine myself playing against Europe. You know. Once, I mean? once I mean, you started talking, you would definitely be a dead giveaway. Yeah. That's for sure. But I, if I wasn't playing, I'd I'd like the matches to be a lot closer. If, if I wasn't playing, I, I I'd I'd be watching and I'd be thinking, obviously, hoping Europe would win, but hoping the matches would be a lot closer. I like that. I like that. Yeah. As a neutral, but when you're out there playing, you, you just want to kill them. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, you're that. desperate hey, to win. That's it. Uh, you're in the arena, baby. Uh, but once it's over, you're thinking, oh, I, I wish it would have been closer. You know what I mean? But when you're, but when you're actually playing, like you, you just want to win every point. But, uh, but as a, if I wasn't playing, then I'd be, I'd be sort of semi rooting for America to give them a game. You know what I mean? Just, I, just, just for the good of the tournament, the, it's good for the Americans and it's good for, uh, it's good for TV. You know what I mean? I tell you what, I got kind of nervous when you guys jumped on top of the Rasson table all on one side. Oh, Being yeah. at the design, I thought it was going to teeter like yeah, a well, seesaw. I was, I was. I don't afraid. think at that stage we really cared. Yeah, I, well, you guys were full of adrenaline. That's yeah, for I sure. mean, the Moscone Cup brings the adrenaline out. It's incredible. It's, it, yeah, your emotions, you, you react. To, I mean, I, I like throw throw throwing my cue on the floor. I mean, uh, I didn't even know I, what, what what I was doing when after, after I beat Shane. It's just a natural reaction. It's just all the pressure. Yeah. You're very intense and the, the drama, the crowd's going crazy. Just like so. letting the air out of a, yeah, uh, you, a just, crock pot or something or a every, pressure cooker. Every point feels like a, you're playing in a final rack of a world championship. 
So uh, and, just, and that's the yeah. and that's the stage it's on. I yeah, mean, it's, just, it's really that it's big. Just uh, every every shot feels so important. You know, I mean, it's very hard to explain. It's uh, it's a unique tournament, and it probably doesn't mean as much as winning a world championship. Obviously, I mean, you'd rather win a world championship than the Moscone Cup. But once you're there, it feels like the most important thing in the world. Yeah. And, uh, I can, I can just see because the of the the history of the tournament, and obviously you're playing against America, so it's always like a nice, friendly rivalry. Uh, it's <laughs> like a sporting rivalry. I mean, people are on about changing it, Europe and Asia, or Europe and North America. It's not yeah. a bit. You, 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 I mean, Europe against America has got that sporting rivalry uh, because of the golf and stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, that's that's what makes it. I mean, if it was, I mean. The mind to be another event as well, like Europe against right, Asia. So give us some I mean, that's going to be fun, but I don't think it'll ever be the same atmosphere as the Moscone. What's the top secret ingredients that you guys are using, man? You guys get together and you're using some kind of top secret. I think it's just more of a case we bond better as a team, and we we all treat each other as equals, and then we, and then we all. And that's at all times, by the way. If one of us lose a match, we we never show any disappointment. Right. When we go back to the team room, we never take anything negative back in that team room because you don't want the guy who's practicing who's just about to go out and play seeing me like f uh, cursing and throwing my cue around. So as soon, soon as we go back to the team room, it, it's gone. We're like get, getting behind the next guy. And then when, it, when he leaves the room to go and play his match, we'll have like a little uh, whinge, you know what I mean? Like we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah, sure. We'll have like a... A little cry. We should have done this. We should have done that. Sure. But, uh, but we never take anything negative back to the team room for the guy who's going out to play next. And then we just have each other's back all the time, and uh, we trust each other, and uh, we do a lot. Of, we we stick together for the whole week as uh, as a team. Like we we have meetings all the time. We we uh, go out for dinner, breakfast, lunch. Uh, so we're together. Uh, uh, except bonding, when, bonding even more than the only time we're not bonded. The, on, the only time we're not together the whole week is when is when we're sleeping. <laughs> so right. uh, we just have a great team spirit and uh, we just believe in each other and trust each other and uh, it's just we and have a good shows. time. And we get the crowd involved. I think I think we spend more time with the crowd than uh, than let's say that the 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 European teams did in the in the past like let's say 10 15 years ago. I think the European teams didn't quite get it but when Johan come in, Johan uh, Rushing come in, he, he just changed the old concept, and uh, and then I think it also helped with the British guys starting to make the team like myself and Cowboys, Chris Mellon. I think we brought like that extra passion to the team, and uh, the maybe the Cowboys brought he brings a lot of fun into the team room. Yeah, yes, he does. He's like the jokester. Yeah. And then you've got Mellon, who's like a, a big character, and he's he's always fun to be around. And you've got me, who's really serious, but uh, but can be goofy also. And Marcus and, Schumacher. And I, I demand every guy to give it 110%. Like I'm one of them guys, two weeks before the, the event starts, I'm, I'm uh, texting the guys, making sure they're like putting the work in, you know what I mean? Right, right. And Marcus is just full of passion and uh, character. He is, he is. Full of heart. He takes everything real, really to heart. Oh, yeah. And he's, yeah. He's, he's very easy to get him to cry, oh, too. Yeah. <laughs> I see that. What I like about Marcus is he that takes about he's heart. always looking to improve. Like last year when he captained in Vegas, he, he said that he wasn't happy with the, with the job he did last year in Vegas. So that's good because then he was looking to improve this time in London. And he did a much better job in London than he did in Vegas. And then, obviously, next year, they'll probably be looking to improve again. And that's what you got to do. It's the same running tournaments. You've got to look to improve it all the time, unless you've no interest in, in trying to build the tournament to something bigger. Right, right. Uh, but, uh, but that's our goal. We, we want to build something uh, big. Oh, it, it's uh, And it's, it's very hard for me to not get ahead of myself. I, I'm already thinking about 2018, and we haven't even started yet. And uh, I just keep reminding myself, look, just uh, let's just see what happens first. Uh, yeah. But I, I do get excited, and because... Uh, I'm going to do it for the game. Uh, obviously, I want to make money. I'm not going to do it for free. Right, but right. all the sponsorship money, all the entry fees goes to the players. There's un, one, 150%. Uh, there you go, folks. And that's what it's all about. There's other ways for promoters to make money. And uh, I think that's the way it should be. Uh, so, And obviously, we're going to expand our team. Uh, eventually, we'll have like 15, 20 people working. I'm, at the moment, I think we've got 10. And I'm really happy with the team, but eventually I'm going to know I'm going to need like like if we're going to run like a real big series like next year, I, uh, I want to have six tournaments. 
and then and then if it's if it's a success and then we go to like eight tournaments and then if it keeps building we go to more tournaments we we'll do it like golf and uh, stuff like that we'll i mean 20 tournaments a year like snooker uh, so well you got other events in between too there's going to have to definitely be well, dates that are going to because you might be busy uh, uh, with, and uh, uh, and the turning stone or at end of the day Al, i mean if you look at the tournaments in america except for ex exception of the us open Turning Stone's got its, uh, it's been around a long time, so I'll always respect the tur uh, Turning Stone, the Derby, uh, the Expo, and I'll respect the US Open, but anything else, I mean, you you have to think of the World Championships, they've been around forever, the China Open, I I'll avoid all them tournaments, but eventually, if, if we're doing like 10, 15 tournaments a year, we can't be trying, trying to avoid like... Uh, Conflict or a time at what's right. in Gotham, for example, or right. Steinway, or uh, I mean, it's just beyond your control. I mean, like, there's only uh, so many days. It in is year. what it is. I mean, they're nice tournaments, but they're not really doing anything. You know what I mean? They're just, they're, they're just whatever. You know what I mean? But I mean, we're looking to do a professional tour. Yeah. I mean, so it people should be working around us eventually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and obviously, you, I, I know I'm going to upset a lot of people. And that's just the way the beast goes but if uh, for us down the line to be able to run like six eight ten ton ton tournaments a year i can't be i can't be looking to avoid every time in the country you know what i mean there's gonna be some clashes and then the, you, you have a, a decision to make do you uh, do you have ambition and you want to play in a professional tour or do you want to play in the no no disrespect like the i don't know the uh, right right a regular i can start open or something right you know right, I mean? right right uh, I mean, yeah, it's 5,000 to the winner, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, they're nice tournaments, you know what I mean? I'm not knocking them, but I right. mean, we're trying to build something big. And that's the goal, really, is that in two or three years' time, I want the players to be playing for $40,000, 50000 winner at each tournament. And uh, I've no doubt we'll get there. It's good, I mean, next year for sure. So uh, down the road, somewhere down the road, uh, you might even be looking at a convention center. Oh, we are. Uh, every yeah. time it would be... I mean, I don't mind pool rooms as long as it's a big pool room. I am thinking about next year using more pool rooms, but really top-tier pool rooms like California Billiards, uh, Corner Pocket in Canada. Apparently, that's an awesome pool room. Uh, Jimmy White. Uh, yeah. What's it called? Uh, Fargo Billiards is apparently yeah. a, an awesome pool room. So... So that there, there, uh, so that there is pool rooms out there. What can cater for that type of tournament? And I don't mind pool rooms as long as the equipment's good and it's big enough. Because pool rooms create a better atmosphere. I think uh, you're guaranteed a crowd. And uh, but obviously we'll probably end up in casinos and stuff like that. But make sure we get good locations where you no know, respect like that. I, I like the goals that you have in mind. There, yeah, I mean, there is no end to it. You know, no, what I mean? no, you, you just want to get bigger and bigger. You've got to think uh, positive. And uh, I know there's a market out there. We just need to we, we need to tap into that market and let uh, make amateurs and juniors realize that there is something in the future for them to take up pool. That was my next question. And that's a problem. In other, in other words, you're talking on a professional level right now. Mm. Uh, is there somewhere down the road where uh, the amateurs and the younger crowd, uh, younger pool players in America are going to have some place to go and play? Do no, you, do you think of <clears throat> something that big on that scale where that might be part of the uh, yeah the gig? Well, I mean, you've got the AP, APA, which is massive, tap, tap big, and uh, BECA. So my goal eventually is to get into all these and say, look, uh, bring a, like, we 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 can send players to uh, to their national finals, their regional finals, and uh, do exhibitions, and then we can do some coaching for the kids, uh, the amateurs in the leagues, and uh, yeah, just uh, uh, try and try and show them that there is a professional tour out there. Darren, I have a question uh, about the tour or the series. Mm -hmm. Now, is mm -hmm. this strictly going to be eight ball, or, or do you plan on uh, opening it up to? Well, it's, it's, it's a long story, really. Oh, okay. uh, no, no, it's, it's a good question because uh, uh, it, it all started in Romania. I uh, did the uh, Dynamite Open in uh, Romania in 2015, and it, and and it was only maybe four or five four or five thousand euro to the winner, which is at this moment in time is about the same as a dollar. Uh, but 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 uh, but it was a great show and we had big crowds and it was a good time. But uh, but that didn't really happen for uh, last year in 2016. And I was looking to bring it to Greece. I was I, w I was looking at Greece as a venue, but the economy is really bad there. 
so then I spoke to Manny and I says, look, maybe I'll uh, do uh, my 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 event at Steinway, just like Dynamite Open. So we penciled the date in January the 14th to the 17th, and it was going to be uh, ten ball, and then and then everything changed. Like Manny started uh, sort of like Mikkel, yeah. a like fellow professional who's like probably like the best uh, eight ball player in the world, mm -hmm. which people are going to see next week. And uh, nobody knows him over here, so that's going to be really interesting. But he, he uh, just starts speaking to me and saying, "Look, maybe it's time to to think a bit bigger. I think it's he's he basically give me like just give me like the push to say, look, I think you're the guy to uh, to to start like a, a tour, like do something bigger, nine and, ball, uh, ten ball, because it's something I used World to do a lot series. when I, when I lived in the U UK. I used to run tours and stuff like that. I used to, I used to run a lot of tournaments." Uh, but nothing of, of, of the scale I'm going to do here. But uh, but uh, but when I was running them tournaments, Paul uh, Paul was buzzing in the UK, and then I, I noticed that when I left the UK and come over to America to to live here, uh, it sort of died off. I'm thinking, oh, maybe I I did I did something good in the UK because uh, now it's just sort of it's sort of dead really. So then uh, so then I, I I just got speaking to Mikhail and then I start speaking to Manny and then Matt. Manny started getting excited when I said like maybe we could run like a series or a tour, and then uh, and then I just sort of started writing. I, I just started writing for like two weeks, just writing all these uh, I, I ideas down. Just kept adding things, and then uh, and then I thought yeah maybe we could do something. And then I sort of pitched it to all the sponsors who I, who I thought I I could definitely get, and they they loved the uh, the uh, concept and the vision what I had. And then they sort of supported it a lot more than what I expected. So then I thought, oh, yeah, let's let let's go for it, really. Uh, but uh, originally we was going to call it like the world the world eight ball series. Uh, but then I sort of thought about it. and I thought, well, what about if it doesn't really work? Why limit ball? yourself, right? So what so what we did is change the world pool series. Uh, start off with eight ball, and then obviously if it's a success, we'll we'll keep playing eight ball. Uh, just because it's the most recognised game in the world uh, for pool, anyway. Uh, I mean, everyone plays eight yeah, ball around the world. So I'm thinking that's where we might get our, our most viewers. That that is what the majority of the amateurs play, and uh, that's where the money is really. I mean, in pool, in any sport, it all comes from the fans and the amateurs, right? I mean, we we out we out them like we don't have a chance, uh, and then. Uh, but I, I want I want to keep the options open so that if it doesn't work, we can change to nine ball, ten ball. And uh, and even mix it up a little. Even bit. if it does yeah. work, uh, you, yeah. you can have one series as an. Yeah, I've thought know. about. It, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, if the eight balls a success next week, then we'll stick with eight ball in the short term. But if it's not a success, and maybe the second or third event, we we'll go to nine ball, uh, or or even ten ball. But I mean, uh, just leave that door open. Right. Yeah. yeah I mean, good. I love straight pull and I love one pocket, but I don't think it works it for, works, for yeah. TV and uh, the, the, the general fan because uh, straight pull and uh, I mean straight pull's played a little bit in Europe but it, nobody plays it in Asia and nobody plays it in the Middle East so that's no good really it's especially because that's a big market in Asia and the Middle East for pool right now so uh, straight pull and one one pocket would never work uh, so obviously eight, eight, eight ball, nine ball and ten ball is the main three disciplines I mean obviously nine ball because it's the it's the most recognized TV game I mean I mean for it's American quick too, right and, and it's, it's, it's quick it's and exciting, exciting. And as long as you get the rules right I, I, I still think there's a there's a I, I think it's a, in some ways a better game than ten ball uh, I think that it, it, I think the thing with nine ball is that the the players want to get rid of the, the look in the nine ball but it seems like the, the general fan likes likes the look in nine ball where part of the game I, I keep thinking we should be playing call shot but maybe we shouldn't I, I don't know uh, but but ten balls it is what it is I mean th the good thing with ten ball it's been there from day one that you play call shot so that's okay for ten ball but I think nine ball I think people like I think it creates more excitement I, I, I have in the look in the game and uh, uh, stuff like that and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it, better it, for, it's for, quick, for TV, you know? right? I mean, there's, there's still a lot of shot making, and it, and, it, and, it, and it's a very quick game. And like you say, I mean, uh, hey, you, you you had the unfortunate uh, position today mm. of Johnny Moore yeah, just yeah. shot lights out. He made yeah, he great, one yeah. little error. But uh, that was, it wasn't uh, even an error. It was more of the break, really. I right. mean, it, he actually broke bad in the match, but it was getting lucky on his break. 
and he and, and, and you scratched twice. You and he took advantage of that. He, yeah. he, 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 he obviously, I think, maybe three or four times where he completely lost the cue ball, but he got lucky to get a shot after the break. Uh, but obviously, he, he took advantage of that, and he played really well. And I, I think I got, I got kicked enough twice on the break. And yeah. That's like a four-game swing there, really. It's uh, the, it's so the only game you could play perfect <laughs> and get punished. Oh, yeah. That's right? Right. <laughs> I mean, that, I, in that match there with John, I, I made a, uh, a bad positional shot in the first game. But played a good safety, but still lose a rack, and then uh, <coughs> I missed a three nine combo in, at four two, and then I make a mistake in the last game, but I'm losing eight two. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I, I missed a bank. It, it was a tough laid table, so yeah, it went I only really made one one and a half mistakes, and I lose nine three, uh, but mainly because of the break. It, it was, it, I mean, he played well, but he was, uh, but. But the breaks allowed him to play well. Yeah, they opened up nice. Yeah. Even when he lost the cue ball, he followed it, yeah, and yeah. he wound up getting... Yeah, I mean, he, he made a lot of good shots as well, and yeah. uh, he, he uh, made some nice bank shots, made a couple of really nice long shots, and uh, kept the momentum. Well, it's not your first rodeo playing, John, and you're going to play him down the road, too. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean... Uh, In the I mean, finals. Yeah, we might play each other again. I mean, we've, yeah. we've, we've actually played each other a lot. Even though he's, he's quite young, we, 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 do, we do play each other a lot. And I used to beat him up a lot. But uh, recent times, he's, he's started holding his own. He's, you, you can see how much he's improved the last two years. You know, I said that uh, I mean, watching I think, on the stream I think, I think the first eight, ten times I played him, I beat him. And it was not... I mean, it, it's never easy because he's, he's always had that talent. But I always felt as if I, I, I had a, I had his number. You know what I mean? Right, right. A little bit like Jason as well. I, I used I used to have his number, and then they're getting better now. And now, <laughs> especially I mean, no respect to John, but Jason's sort of like the best player in the world right now. And uh, he's getting I mean, he's been kicking my ass a lot the last two years. And uh, unconscious. Uh, and John's been holding his own is uh, as well with me. I mean, probably the last ten times we've played, he might have won the last six out of four. Uh, last. Maybe the last six out of ten, uh, so that's a big, a big thing for him because he was getting beat up a lot. You know what I mean? So that just shows how much they've improved, yeah. and uh, their all their all round games improved. That's the key. I mean, I used to beat them two guys easy with the safety, but now they've improved their safety, and that's the key to the game. At the top level, your safety's got to be good. And the worst thing is, is that. Their safety can be a lot better still. They've still a lot to learn with the safety, so that's scary because kick they're, right? they're going to get safes. better. Right. What I do you mean, think about kick safe then? Oh, it's the most Big important. Part of the game, it's right? one of the most important shots in the game because yeah. at our level, we all run out as good as each other. But it's whoever beats that player to the shot. You've got to beat the player to the shot and create more opportunities. Uh, cause, because once the balls are open like this, I mean, you're like, you need to be very lucky to come back to the table against someone like uh, the calibre of John Mora or right, uh, Jason yeah. Shaw or any 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 professional, really. Right. Uh, uh, so, I mean, <coughs> uh, breaking good and uh, and obviously playing really good safeties and making the right decision, that's the key. Where Jason and John, I, I can use them as an example because they're young. So, obviously, there was raw before where now they start making better decisions where before they'd be a little bit reckless, especially Jason. He was Jason, very reckless. Yeah. It was fast. And yeah. sometimes it'd be very easy to beat. And then the next time, it, but he's one of them guys what can just blow you away. This he guy can blow you away. Down right here. Right. It's not really a case he's slowed down. He's just thinking better. Improvement. And he's, he's matured, you know what yeah. I mean? That, that's the key. We it's noticed that over the past year uh, watching yeah. him because we watch him all the time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he, he slowed down a little bit yeah. just to make the decisions. Yeah, don't panic. He, right. don't, he don't panic anymore. He used to panic a little bit when and, he was under like fire. big pressure. Right, I mean, right. he, he played the game earlier today and uh, a couple of hours ago, and he was down 8-6 against a uh, Canadian-French player. Yes, Joey and Cicero. So it, he's under a lot of pressure there. I mean, he come up with a big, uh, he, he come big in the last rack. I mean, but he was nice because his, his demeanour was perfect. His composure was great and took his time on each shot. And he won that match? He executed, yeah, and he wow. won that match. And uh, when you win a match like that, I mean, he's, he's probably a big favourite to win this tournament now. Yeah, the confidence. Just because he, he loves his place anyway. It's like his own. <laughs> I mean, to win this tournament four out of five is incredible. He's been uh, doing a lot of uh, comeback. He's like the comeback kid. Yeah, for and, he, and he's on such a good run. I mean, he's probably, I mean, I, I think the last 27 tournaments he's played in, he's won 17 of them. I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> but about 10 out of them 17 have been really big, big tournaments. tournaments. Right, right. I mean, seven of them like a, maybe a, a no-respect like a, a local tour, like a Predator tour or something. I mean, they're nice tournaments to win, but 
a, you, you have a but, small handful of yeah, top but, yeah, competitors. Yeah, the, right? the mine, the mine, four or five guys to beat, but the, there's around ten tournaments, at least eight, ten, eight events for sure where he's beat a world class field. I mean, champion after champion. I mean, that takes some doing. You got a world class field here at the World Pool Series. Oh yeah, uh, representing thirty countries. Uh, yeah. You could take, the, folks, take a look at the list of players. Yeah, it's incredible the magnitude of talent that's going to be there. You want to see it, trust me. If you can get down to Steinway Billiards in Astoria, Queens, New York, get there. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. January 14th. And the good 17. thing is that we're building a TV arena with a, yeah. a, lot, like a really good arena, uh, perfect lighting, and we're having like, uh, flashing lights, uh, the uh, smoke yeah. machine, so the players are going to come out to music. Uh, Ted Learner's the, M the MC, and in my opinion, is, is the best in the business by a mile. <coughs> so we actually we actually over budget ourselves to just to get Ted Learner there because he's, he's the bee's knees when it comes to like the the bee's knees, the introductions and the the MC, but his passion. But also he he, he is he is a great journalist also. So obviously he's going to do all the reports for the tournament. And he'll probably do a little, like a little bit of commentating, and yeah, uh, yeah. obviously he's gonna he's gonna do the intro. So every round is gonna be introduced. You're not gonna say, "Oh, uh, Jason Shaw, table two. They'll get announced properly every round. And then when we get towards the last couple of days, then when it's a, a like a match on the stream, the players will be coming out to music, smoke machine, Light. and they'll be doing like player interviews before they start the match, and then player interviews afterwards, and just make it a big show. Just get the crowd involved. And then, uh, and then we do the presentation on the last day, and then we've got an after party. There's going to be champagne. There's going to be food, and we're all going to get uh, smashed and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it's all about: having a good time. Yeah, uh, we, 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 and we've got all the sponsors coming. I mean, we, uh, it's quite scary, actually. Uh, I mean, <laughs> even, even even though they're my friends, like a lot, a lot of the sponsors, but. It's starting to come together. Yeah, and but when you're sort of doing something, you, you, I'm you, sort of working for them, really. It, I mean, It's got to be on that scale. It's yeah. appreciated on, by everybody. On the know? table, I always feel in control. But off the table, when you're doing something like this, uh, there's more pressure. So I, I'm getting excited, but uh, quite nervous because I want to make sure the sponsors are happy. Because uh, they're, they're all coming. So that's, uh, that's, that's, that's they a wouldn't bit get more pressure. You if they didn't believe no, in you. No, it's great. I mean, they uh, believe in you. I just want to make sure it runs smoothly and they have a good yeah. time and all the the, I'm the fans, sure. I'm sure. The fans and the players, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll. I mean, we're going to make some mistakes in the early doors, in the early, the early days. So we we'll just make sure we try and improve it all the time. But eventually, I want to like do like uh, uh, like the players doing 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 some coaching with the uh, we like the fans, let's say, <coughs> doing like a lot of uh, signings and stuff like that, and uh, maybe a couple of days before each event, we can get some of the players to visit some of the schools or maybe go to an hospital for the kids and stuff like that just 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 try and build our our game and our our brand really i mean and respect for the game and uh, yeah. just 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 show people that 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 pool that pool can be a sport and right. not and they not, are human beings <laughs> not just a, a a a bar game and right. uh, that's uh, al and i were discussing today uh maybe an idea of a, a location where mm -hmm. these top players yeah. could possibly give a bio in the same spot so uh, you can create a fan base yeah and have yeah. people che cheer for you yeah of course i mean we're we're gonna be doing a lot a lot a lot of interviews we're gonna be we're gonna be flooding players with interviews i mean whoever wins the first event we're gonna do a documentary on that champion like maybe probably like me and ted learner do a documentary on that champion maybe go to his house or something and then like when it comes to the second event we can put it on the website put it on the social media just building like that character that the players and the, and, the, and then on the website we have like, a bio like a bio of all the players and like you click on that play you will see all his details and then if you want to if you want to book him for an exhibition you, you just click on there and then you send us an email there you go and just try and build it up that way we're, we're, we're going to be doing a lot of interviews and we want to do some short documentaries of some of the players uh and maybe do some like uh questions for the players I like, like just q and a's fun stuff you yeah. know what i mean we're and, excited uh, for you darren yeah, believe good. me yeah, yeah, but I that's mean, what we, we love it we have the passion for that, the game i hope that you can see the enthusiasm that he has yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, absolutely. it's just like boom it's, good. It's, it's right there because that's the only way we're gonna get the players to be well known i mean i've been playing a long time i i, I don't i don't feel famous at all uh, i'm not saying i want to be but i should be really right you but are no you are. I, yeah. i'm only in the pool world not outside the pool world where we oh, okay. gotcha. we we need to reach out to the outside of the pool world and 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 get them to become fans. 
where I, I, I can go to any bar in America, like a regular bar with, with, with a bar table in there. They might, get a game. And I can walk in there and maybe <laughs> no, nobody recognizes me. And that's right. pretty sad, really. Yeah, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. But yeah. you can't do it over in Europe. Well, yeah, saving you. I, I can go. I mean, obviously, if, if I go to my local uh, town, then I probably get recognised. But, uh, but not everywhere. But I mean, in Europe, you, you if you go in a pub, you're okay. You don't get recognised. How really? about China? Yeah, it's different. I mean, if you go in a pool room, you, you get recognised over there because it's sort of like, you know, it sort of seems to be uh, bigger over there. Let's say. But in, if you go to a bar, you don't get recognised right, or no, a, no. A, a restaurant. But, um, but, but, uh, but. But I mean, in in America especially, I mean, the place should be a lot more well known. Yeah, if you were a golfer and you walked into this room. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, uh, I don't really want to. Uh, I mean, there's been a few tournaments before where, like, we've had like, uh, we've had some players come to a tournament who wasn't playing, right? But it was a ticket. It w it was a ticket thing, and 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 I think. I don't want to want to mention the tournament because I'll probably get in okay. trouble. But no, don't mention it. But basically, this well-known professional players come over to watch right he probably lives like 200 miles away he's he's come over to watch the tournament and they they charge him a ticket to come and watch and i, I found that staggering me i mean it's i don't know it's, it's like tiger woods going to uh a golf tournament in uh i don't know like your like local golf tournament just 18 bucks please yeah and you say oh is is uh, it's 18 dollars to get in i mean uh, i mean that should never happen i mean right uh any any like celebrity or whatever want to come to our tournament, then you don't have to pay. <laughs> Thanks, I'll be there. But also, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, that's what you want. To, you want to encourage stuff like that. Yeah, sure. you want players like sure. that to I mean, be there. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, you've got to uh, you use your common sense. Let's say, but it should be good. Yeah, I'm very very excited, and uh, hopefully, it all goes well, and uh, hopefully, we get the back in a. Uh, uh, the amateur game and uh, yeah, I think that's key league. too. The uh, amateurs. Yeah. yeah um, uh, also, we all the raffle prizes we do, we 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 give uh, twenty percent to uh, uh, Billiard Education. Uh, uh, what right. what uh, Sam 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 Depp, uh, Sam Depp. Yeah. Depp does for the uh, kids. Bill Billiards Education Foundation. So uh, we'll be doing a lot a lot a lot of raffle prizes at the tournament. So uh, uh, be good to. That's fast Lenny in the chat. They said, well, I the love the what, juniors. what you are doing, Darren. You have been successful. Cheers. Yeah, we need that Cheers in this off. country for the juniors because the uh, yeah. the future in the up-and-coming players is looking yeah. a little bleak compared to yeah, the numbers. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, uh, I had a nice gesture last night. There's a They run a qualifier in Thailand, right? But the winner of the event couldn't come because he couldn't get a visa. And then the second-place guy couldn't couldn't get one either so that guy just said to me uh, can you find like a, a junior player who would play in the tournament and he, he uh, can have the spot for free so that's why I put a post on Facebook last night asking who's the best uh, junior basically uh, around New New York and the majority said Thomas Rice so uh, Thomas Rice will have a spot in the in in the first series next week all all expenses paid wow so that's good that's big, and that's something we want to do in the future. Is that yeah. uh, once we're sort of established and we uh, get some money behind us, then I'll probably have like a junior champion come and play all like all his expenses paid and obviously his entry because obviously it's very expensive uh, for a junior to be able to afford to play. So uh, and then we, that's we, that's the that's the foundation I mm. see being built. Right. Yeah, so we'll definitely have one or two juniors each tournament where they get all their expenses paid. It might not happen the first year, but we're going to try our best. But the second year, but maybe the grand final and the second year for sure, we'll have at least one or two jun junior champions who will come and play for free, and uh, and obviously the same with the let's say the national champion or the, the amateur champion or like right. uh, ladies national champion stuff like that. They're, sure, I want to get all these people to come and play and uh, give them something to go at. You know, what what happens to the 13 year old uh, young man or young girl now is looking and say, hey, look at Thomas Rice. He's playing in his professional tournaments. Yeah. He's all dressed up, yeah. looking sharp. I want to do that. And, he's, he, and he's got his entry fee. And now, it, how do I get on board? Yeah, he, he's a character as well. Uh, Thomas Rice is a character. <laughs> yeah, he is. I have Daddy's number in case he gets out of hand. Yeah, he's funny. <laughs> yeah. He's a funny guy. He's, he's, he's like a mini Jason Shaw. 
Oh, oh really? Jason, That's how Jason was when he was younger? <laughs> Jason Shaw was like a mini ill, but Thomas Rice is uh, <laughs> okay. a mini Jason, Jason Shaw. Jason's listening in my <laughs> <laughs> He's a fun guy. Yeah, just uh, obviously we, we want to try and get into the leagues and try and help the leagues, but also they help us also. Right. Yeah, so with the like, amateurs, absolutely. I don't know. There's a lot of regional uh, championships and local leagues, so we, we can send send players to do like a presentation now or do exhibition and and stuff like that, and then uh, and then obviously they they can get their champion or something into our tournaments. Right. You know what I mean, and uh, or even have like a, a qualifying Qualifier, tournament right. through through uh, that particular league. Because there's a lot of pool leagues in America, uh, that, but uh, most of these players don't know about any pro game. Yeah, it's all. I spoke to a lot of amateurs the last six months, and they they, they haven't got a clue what what's happening in the pool world. There's no. no uh, there's, there's nothing really clear cut on how 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 to qualify for tournaments and how 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 you can make a living. Right. Where at the moment, unless you like a, a Shane Van Bowen or a Jason Shaw, it's it's impossible to make a living. Right. So obviously that's our uh, that's our goal is to change that. You win a tournament, and then you all of a sudden you got to start searching what tournaments coming up next weekend or yeah. where tournaments next. With this, there'll be a tournament. Yeah. There'll be. A, Six, Clear. eight, yeah. ten, twelve. If, if you look growing. at if you look God at sports willing. like uh, golf, you you won't believe what they do for the amateur game and the juniors. And it it, it isn't that difficult. You just need the right, a, a bigger team. That's all. You need someone to do that work. Caroline Powell's on the hill. She's got to five, six, seven, nine. Yeah, we've sort of be. neglected this match, which is I guess is a little bit naughty, really. That's right. Yeah, Caroline understands. But we have been watching. She wouldn't want us. She wouldn't <laughs> want you to say how good she is anyway. Yeah, <laughs> it's all for the good cause. I believe the spectators, I mean the uh, chatters, and no, everybody it was very, watching. I think it was very important to yeah, let enjoying everybody here. Darren Appleton, the promoter of the World Pool Series, and his input. And I know he's going to say, "Well, it's everybody. It's a team," and it is. Mm. But his concept come to life. And hear it right out of Darren's mouth. I'm glad because I, I don't know, just maybe five, six, seven hundred people. I don't know how many people are still out there. Oh, nice. But uh, team needs a leader, though. Well, I'm just a founder, but uh, yeah. I mean, I've I've played a big role in it, but uh, the guys have played a massive role also. Everyone yeah, really. Everybody. I mean, every, everybody everyone has their has job a to part, do. Right. There you have it. There Caroline you know. Powell Winky. gets out, folks. That was the last match of the night. Caroline Winky. I, I uh, want to say uh, thank you to Darren uh, for sitting in and giving. Yeah, and also uh, uh, go his words go uh, to all our social media pages, uh, World Pool Series on uh, Twitter, Facebook, all all the pages. Uh, and you can find all the information right on WorldPoolSeries.com. There's yep. the, all the accounts are right there. Hit them up, like them, get together. Whatever you got to do, because, uh, like Darren said, this is going to be big, and get on board. It's almost like all our responsibilities, as much as we have passion for this game, to yeah. to kick it forward, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah that. Uh, I mean, if you look at the IPT, I mean that that had the right concept. That he just tried to go too big too early, right. and that was a shame because that was unbelievable. But he just went too big too early. Where if 